everybody, it's DR Drake 63 here today, and today we're going to talk about making some modifications to the Galil Ace in 762 NATO. I have uh, I have videoed about this plenty, and uh, as you know, I'm very fond of this firearm, but there are a couple things that I'm not fond of. Number one is it's too heavy. It's it's a clunker and it needs to be lighter and so we're going to look at a couple ways to save some weight. One's going to be through the handguard here and the other is replacing this folding stock with a fixed skeleton stock which should save me a lot of weight because I'm finding that I do not need either a folding or adjustable stock on this rifle. I don't share it with anybody, it's mine, and uh, standard length stock works great for me. So we're gonna talk about exactly how we're gonna do that and uh, do some modifications. Stay tuned. I'd like to make my rifle look as much like this original Israeli 7.62 Galil as possible, but that's gonna be hard as I'll explain later in this video. While this nice RS Regulate handguard is going to do a lot to lighten the load and slim the profile, it's definitely not the original wood handguard. This skeleton stock at 9.5 inches, a skeleton stock, uh, is going to work real well for me, I think. I'm generally not one to monkey around a lot with firearms or change them. I try to buy stuff in a, in a configuration I pretty much like. But having, having lived with this firearm now and shot... Over a thousand rounds through it, I'm finding there's a couple things that I don't like. One, um, this side folding mechanism, which is kind of cool in concept, is very impractical for me. You cannot, you cannot close it and and really fire the gun. I'm not. I'm really not interested in space saving features with this, and that's about all you accomplish by side folding that. Um, there's a lot of weight in this hinge, and I don't know how well you can see it, but you've got some play there, which I don't like, which tends to be getting a little bit worse um, as I fire it. And again, you've got the weight of the hinge. It, it introduces a weak link, so uh, we've got a remedy for that. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that. And I mentioned the handguard. So two things that we're going to change, and uh, we'll talk about the products we're using as we go along. The first thing we're going to do is take off this top cover. I found the easiest way to do that. So I'll go ahead and take take a, a a little punch here and depress that all the way in there. So I've actually pushed I've actually pushed that that spring detachment clip in there all the way. Now it's a matter of getting this dog off of there. And there we go. So um, having a little something to grab onto on the top is a little bit helpful. So we'll go ahead and take out our guts because we're not going to need those for a little while. And voila, there we go. And if you look in here, you can see there's a handguard, there's the heat shield, and so forth. So we're going to replace this handguard. I'd actually put a little tiny piece of duct tape in there to keep this tighter because you'll notice and this is one thing that I'm I don't like rattles at all guys and this is one thing you'll notice just a, a little bit of rattle here smallest amount with this and that's why we wanted to take off the handguard so we're looking to save some weight here we'll see whether or not we really do but like I said I wanted those on there real tight Good old duct tape seems to be the cure-all for everything at some point or the other. So what we have here is a bolt that holds this on. OK, 
Okay, as you can see, here I'm using a 1 8 inch punch. Maybe you can see that. But uh, basically we're gonna, we're gonna drive. Okay, so that's come out. And you'll notice now that this just wiggles right out. And here you can see how that all works right there, okay? That's one piece. And you can see the spring there, the whole nine yards. Like I said, it's a lot of weight and a weak link that I don't need on my rifle. Got another sticker to add to the wall of fame here. And looking at this, taking a real quick look, this, this already feels so much lighter taking that out. And what we're going to do is use the KNS Precision Galil Stock Adapter, which is this piece right here. Now this comes with a silicone adhesive, and that's used to help fit this piece so that you don't have any play. No play whatsoever. So when you drop that in, <laughs> literally drop that in. So when you drop this, when you, when you install this and drop this in, this fits down in there just like that. I'm not going to put it in just yet because I want to have, uh, I want to put that silicone in there. And they give you two roll pins. There's a reason for that, okay? You'll notice there's three holes here. And this particular model of Galil Ace has one roll pin. Later models, which, you know, I just got this new in 2018, but I imagine it was made in 2017, have a second roll pin. So this ships with two roll pins. So just an FYI. But uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and install that with the silicone so that uh, uh, it has a nice 24 hours before we install the buttstock. So that drops in just like that, and that is flush. And that's how you want it, okay? And either one of these two holes will be where we'll we'll screw the uh, the skeleton stock in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this extra. This is again meant to reduce the amount of wiggle that you have. I'm a guy that hates any play at all on stuff like this. My standard for a good firearm um, side folding mechanism is, without a doubt, the Arsenal SLR uh, mechanism. It just locks up tighter than a tick and it doesn't have any wiggle. It makes me real happy. Just a quick shout out to uh, Scott Hoskinson, president of RS Regulate. I think you got what looks to be a great product. You'll hear more about it after I shoot it. Um, but I must point out, Scott, hint, 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 that uh, you have by far the most expensive of all the items that I'm installing today. And uh, so far, you're the only guy that doesn't have a sticker or a decal. We'd love to put you up on uh, love to put you up on the the Builders Hall of Fame here. But uh, so far, nothing. So. Just dropping that hint there. <laughs> Installation's a piece of cake. You've got a cross bolt that, that goes across the back after you get that pushed all the way back. It's really super intuitive. And then here on either side, there's a screw. And there's a little spacer on either side that goes in this cross piece that uh, we showed you earlier that's pinned on. The handguard retention piece. So you put those in. You've got a... A little hex wrench and you're good to go. Really super easy. It was more complicated getting this thing off, getting the old hand guard off, than it was putting this one on. So, what do you think you're going to see on this in terms of heat? Well, you're going to get some radiant heat. There's no question about it. You've, you've got some space here, which is nice. But you are going to get some radiant heat when you shoot the heck out of this. Prepare accordingly and you should be fine. So this is what we're looking at so far. This was about as easy as you can get. 
I feel like I've taken a lot of weight off of this rifle already. Not a ton, but ounces count. Um, and this looks good. This looks good. This is a kind of a perfect black. This is a grayish black. Um, here you have a perfect kind of glossy black with the plastic, grayish black with the barrel, and uh, the, uh, the Ace Skeleton stocks also a glossy black. So sticking with the theme there a little bit. Something else to show you while we're at it. Any thoughts about taking this bottom plastic piece off on the 308 are going to be tough because the magazine release is a part of this plastic. Um, definitely, definitely would be tough to do because, you know, I'd like to make this look as much like a classic Galil as possible. At least in the 308, that's going to be tough. This came priority mail today. Oh, what do you know? Somebody else gave me a decal. I love it. Here is, uh, here's the booklet. This is the catalog from Double Star, and that's who makes these... Wonderful. That's and here it is. And I can already tell that this thing weighs a fraction of what this big clunker does. So let's uh, let's get busy installing this. So I attach this nice little rubber bumper to the back of the stock. It's a nice quality quality build. And uh, this one's nine and a half inches long, which I'm going straight up to the back of the rifle here, straight onto this piece. Okay, so um, pretty simple. It's going to bolt on right there. Okay. If, however, you are wanting to use a folding mechanism in conjunction with this, um, it's going to protrude and add some length, in which case this would be too too long. I would get uh, their shorter version, which is seven and a half inches long, if I was going to do a folder. But obviously, didn't want to do a folder. That's why we're getting ready to, rid of that. But just a lot less weight that we're putting on here, and that's the name of the game. So let's bolt that up and see how she looks. <laughs> Okay, well, we started this video looking at this rifle in uh, a different configuration. Forgot to mention that uh, we did add a vertical foregrip from Magpul on here. And uh, we'll, we'll roll with that a while. Uh, my main concern there was, I know I'm going to get heat right there. Um, that's just a part of the barrel that uh, uh, is going to heat up. And uh, going to want to have something uh, with which to hold on to other than uh, the handguard itself. Obviously, you can wear a glove and man up and that kind of thing. But uh, sometimes I'll shoot this 100 straight rounds. And 308, that's going to be it's going to be quite a deal. But as you can see, we've we've done some some pretty significant replacements on here. We've taken that side folder which has that big heavy iron joint on it and a spring and all this stuff which uh, is fine but wasn't my favorite part of the rifle and uh, replaced it with something real simple um, this particular stock this a stock i could see putting some paracord on that something like that but uh, it's good to go pretty much it's basic we've replaced uh, the handguard which was in that kind of configuration with something much smaller and much lighter. And uh, uh, also, uh, I do like the fact that you've got M-Lock capability on this. And uh, because of that, you're not fooling around with what was 1913 rail that was plastic. And, you know, plastic doesn't necessarily equal bad. That's not where I'm coming from. But uh, I, do, I do like this configuration better. Um, we'll see how long this scope stays on there. But uh, with a few products, as you see, for various manufacturers, um, you end up with, uh, you end up with, a, with a, different, a different scenario. So um, I'm going to have to say that uh, the cost of the materials 
that I use to change this rifle. I won't even say upgrade because I just made it suit my suit my liking. But uh, I think it's an upgrade. And the products that I used all together, um, we were looking at uh, $215 plus shipping for the RNS um, the RNS handguard. We we're looking at about mm, 30 bucks or so for the Magpul. Uh, the stock you see right here, uh, this I got directly from the manufacturer, Double Star. And that's, if you're looking looking for them, that's who it is. Okay. Um, that ran me about 99 bucks. I've seen them on Optics Planet a little bit cheaper in some other places. But when possible, I like to buy direct from a manufacturer. But uh, a lighter weight and I think more useful configuration of this gun that suits my liking. And uh, this stock is on here nice and tight not wiggling not anything we'll see how it does after uh, after rounds down the pipe but i don't expect so so we've cut some weight and uh, i think we have uh, a pretty cool looking firearm to boot okay so as you can see a little bit more compact affair you've got a nice solid uh, nice solid uh, connection here which is what i wanted and what's nice about this and this configuration, um, you do you do notice that there isn't the cheek riser. You can get both on cheek risers, but because of the way the stock is configured, what I'm finding is it's really super easy just to get the part of the stock that you want against your shoulder. And you can get down and look through an optic right here. No optic at all drop down a little bit more it's not a big deal so uh, whereas you can get cheek risers to attach to these things I'm probably not going to do that um, what we're going to do is go out and shoot this as is this upcoming weekend weather allowing and see what we can uh, uh, determine in terms of uh, uh, whether we think we did the right thing or not but uh, I like the look I like um, um, that it's a little bit more like a, a classic Galil Obviously, the biggest thing that makes it not a Galil is this plastic, or I should say polymer, that's part of your magwell. It's, it's your, uh, your trigger guard and it's your grip, all one piece. And, you know, ideally, it'd be good to take that off, but unfortunately, there'd be no way to use SR25 magazines. Then you'd have to get into an AK type of attachment scenario uh, for holding your mags in place, and you'd have to get proprietary mags. So... It's a bit of a trade-off, but it's all right. Not interested in having a lot of polymer on rifles of this variety, which is why I purchased this instead of the SCAR. Um, you know, just the options of things that I can do with this rifle, the accessories, the magazines, everything else just makes it so much more easy to uh, to do changes like this. Uh, would be a lot more expensive to do with a SCAR. And, I'm not convinced that uh, this particular rifle is any less accurate than a SCAR. There's some debate about that. Again, I'll say I think it has to do with who's shooting it, but uh, I've had great results with this rifle. It's a little bit lighter now. I'd say, oh, probably between three quarters of a pound to a pound lighter, and uh, we'll have to say that we like it. Thanks, and uh, this is DR Drake 63 saying so long.